What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Counting Wisdom Podcast. You know, um, I was doing a kind of a Bible study, and I wanted to bring out um, this passage of Scripture, um, and in this passage of Scripture really um i think shows our um kind of where we're coming from in life and um basically in colossians 3:3 3, 3, it says for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You know, um, when and I'll actually continue reading. It says, when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also we will appear with him in glory. So I just wanted to kind of bring out that part that we are dead and our life is hidden with Christ in God. So, you know, basically, it's saying that no no one has life outside of Jesus Christ. Even though we are, you know, alive, so to speak, as, you know, uh, you know, everyone is alive, but there are some who are spiritually dead and, you know, their ultimate eternal dwelling place can be either in heaven or hell. And so when it says you are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God, you know, um, it's saying that, you know, outside of our faith in Jesus Christ, we are not alive, you know, and um, I think that's an important kind of viewpoint on life is that, um, you know, we have no life without a without our faith in Jesus Christ. And, you know, the importance of the work of Jesus Christ from the standpoint that you know, God, in a way, you know, has already judged the world. Now, the Bible, you know, really describes how God doesn't doesn't judge anyone or, you know, you know, he's left all judgment, you know, to Jesus Christ. And so it's really, you know, Jesus and how you know either if you have faith in Jesus Christ you have life or if you do not have faith in Jesus Christ you reject Jesus then you are dead but you know the judgment isn't god for coming from god the father it's really coming from the work of Jesus Christ and you know of course that can sound a little bit confusing if you don't necessarily have a background in, you know, scripture, but, um, going back to the point that I was trying to make is that, you know, at some point, you know, all people died. Now this could be really from the standpoint of when Adam and Eve ate that tree of knowledge of good and evil, when they ate the fruit from that tree, you know, they died along with all their descendants. Now, you know, I like to remember that, you know, Jesus was planned to come to the world before he even created the world. He already had in mind that he was going to be the source of life for his creation but he still made Adam and Eve and gave them a choice. And so when he said, if you eat of the fruit of that tree, you know, you're going to die. 
you know, I don't think they really, you know, took into account the impact of that decision that, you know, I don't think they were really thinking about the consequences of eating that tree. I think they were just kind of thinking about what their perceived benefit from eating that tree would be. And they forgot all about God saying, you know, you're going to die. And so even if there was some benefit to that tree, you know, they they completely forgot that, you know, they can't even enjoy the benefit from the tree because they're going to die, you know. And so they forgot to they forgot to, you know, notice what God said. And so anyway, we died way back then, you know, um, and so all of Adam's Adam and Eve children are born spiritually separated from God. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, they can't, you know, that doesn't mean that we as human beings obviously, you know, can't become spiritually alive but you know uh it's just an interesting fact that you know uh we are all at some point spiritually dead and i think a lot of people don't necessarily think about it like that because you know um we have ability to eat and drink and you know talk and you know, do things that we don't necessarily think from a spiritual standpoint that we are separated from God. And so because we don't see God, and especially because we're not directly in God's presence, you know, I think sometimes we as people wonder, well, hey, what's going on? You know, where is God? And do I even believe in God? See, I don't think Adam and Eve really struggled with believing in God. I think they struggled with believing God's words, but I don't think they struggled like some people do today in that they even doubt God exists, even though that's what they say, even though the Bible describes that, you know, there's plenty of evidence to show that God exists. But, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily realize that, you know, the reason they don't see God is because we were separated from God, you know, and, you know, God can still be found here on earth, but we're not directly in the presence of God like Adam and Eve were. And so when it says that, you know, even as Christians, it says that, you died, you know, and your life is hidden with God is that, you know, your decision and God's decision, you know, the mutual decision of, you know, saving people and also offering salvation. I don't think we realize that we were already dead. And so I think I'm just trying to bring out the at that kind of like the amazingness of how you know becoming a christian can you know obviously change your life and change your eternity and um you know it's weird to think that you know before we were christians or even real Christians, you know, uh, we were dead. And I think that, you know, going back to Adam and Eve, I don't think we would have made a different choice, you know, um, because the Bible says that all people are sinners, you know, from the best person, you know, besides Jesus that has ever lived, you know, down to the worst person, you know, all people are sinners. And so, um, 
you know, because of the, that sin, we are, you know, are subject to eternally being separated from God. Where, you know, if you can imagine, you know, there being a God and you never having that opportunity to find God, you know, it's kind of weird to think about, like, you know, sometimes there's people out there who are like, oh, I want to search to see if there's aliens out there. I want to search to see if there's life out there. And, you know, the explanation of the Bible is that, you know, the reason we're not in God's presence right now is because we have all died, you know, not physically, you know, we're not in a a dream world or something like that, or we're not in hell or, you know, the realm of the dead, you know, because there is a realm of the dead, but you know, spiritually speaking, you know, we are separated from God. And so, um, you know, going back to Adam and Eve, you know, I think we would have all made that decision to disobey God, you know, and eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Even though sometimes knowing what we know now, you know, and all the information that we can get from the Bible, you know, we can say to ourselves, you know, oh, I wouldn't have, you know, eaten that tree. So why does God hold me accountable? Because, you know, I never ate from that tree. But, you know, our decisions to sin show, you know, in my thinking, at least that, you know, we would have all made that decision you know, to disobey God. Now, some people say that, you know, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, uh, you know, just symbolizes Adam and Eve's decision to disobey God. But, you know, I believe that it was a real tree that gave someone power, you know, to have that knowledge of good and evil, in my opinion. But I think it also does represent, you know, the decision that Adam and Eve made to disobey God. But, you know, there was also a tree of life there that apparently had the power to give someone eternal life. And so um, I think that, you know, God placed special power on these two trees to um, give someone, you know, that knowledge of good and evil, you know, even though I think they do, you know, kind of also have a representation of, you know, choosing, making decisions for eternal life or, you know, disobeying God. And so, um, you know, just thinking about the spiritual um, condition that we are all in, I think it kind of goes over our head, you know, and I don't think we may... Uh, fully understand it, you know, uh, we probably as we get older, you know, you may be older, you know, listening to this, but, you know, as we get older, we'll probably get more understanding, but, you know, just the real facts of either going to heaven or going to hell and, you know, just the length of time, you know, that the judgment is, which is, you know, eternally, eternally in heaven or eternally in hell. You know, I think really um, also shines light on the spiritual condition that we are in. And just um, 
you know, I think God places, you know, a supreme value on his creation that, you know, he didn't, um, you know, uh, cut any corners in making us or, you know, he, he, we, we really do have real life and this is reality. You know, this is, um, not evolution or some other theory out there about, you know, how we got here. And so, um, you know, it's just an interesting verse and we can actually read more about, you know, uh, that was Colossians three, verse three and verse four. And so verse five says, therefore put to death your members, which are on, on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry because of these things the wrath of god is coming upon the sons of disobedience you know that brings up another you know good point that it is sin that sends a person to hell you know even though you know there are teachings out there that It's not necessarily your sins that send you to hell, but it's, you know, the rejection of Jesus Christ. But, you know, clearly this verse says in verse six of Colossians chapter three, it says, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. And it lists those things because of these things. Well, which things? It says fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. And so clearly it's not necessarily totally saying in this verse that it's the rejection of Jesus Christ. But it's also, you know, people's specific sins that send someone to hell, you know, and and so it's saying, you know, cup, bringing this all together when it says that we died, it's saying that, you know, because of our sins, you know, the wrath of God is coming upon those that continue in sin. But, you know, at some point, our sins killed us. And if time were to continue going we would eventually find ourselves uh, facing the wrath of God for all of eternity. But because we're in a special time before the wrath of God, we have that decision to attach to Jesus Christ. And, you know, it says that our life is hidden with Christ in God. And so it's saying that, you know, you know, our life is with Jesus Christ. And, you know, outside of that, there is no life. And so um, it brings out later in that verses, you know, that, you know, we died because of those sins, you know, and it's not just talking about only those specific sins that were mentioned in verse five. It's talking about, you know, sin as a whole. And, you know, I think the real judgment is from the continuance of sin because, You know, at one point, you know, I think Romans kind of touches on this point that I'm about to make, which is, you know, at some point, all people sin, regardless of, you know, uh, maybe a decision not to sin, you know, they, they still sin either way. And so, you know, we could say, well, why does God hold a person accountable if they have no choice but to sin? Well, you know, my personal opinion, and I could probably find Bible verses on this, is that, 
you know, it's after you really come to that knowledge of, you know, the things that you're doing are wrong. It's that, you know, continuance in those same wrong decisions that you make that I believe, you know, God is also holding us accountable for is, you know, maybe not the initial, you know, even though that we're still held accountable for that, but, you know, maybe not so much from that standpoint of, you know, I had no choice but to sin, you know, because I was born in this world. And so, you know, I had no choice but to sin. But it's, you know, how we continue in sin. And then also, it's not taking the cure for sin. I think that's the big, one of the bigger deals, you know, it's, you know, having, it's like having a disease, but you know, there's medicine for that cure, but you choose to, you know, keep the disease and, and, and you refuse to go get the cure. And so God is holding people accountable also for refusing to take the medicine that can make them well. And so, um, you know, I kind of wanted to make a video on, you know, some of the reasons why someone would refuse to, you know, get help. But I think the short answer is because, you know, people like, they start to like that sinful lifestyle. And so, um, you know, because the Bible says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And if you hate evil, you know, it's, you know, bringing out that, you know, hey, you have fear of the Lord, you know, and some translations count that as, you know, you respect God, you know, you acknowledge that there is a God. And so you're saying, you know, because there's a God, you know, who is also, you know, righteous and holy, that, you know, I'm turning away from these sins that I know is wrong. And so anyway, going back to Colossians 3.3, 3, you know, that we all died, you know, and uh, it's important to realize that, you know, that, you know, especially, um, you know, baptism represents that dying of the old way and being raised to life in a new way of life through Jesus Christ. And so Jesus really did save the world because, you know, we had all died and, you know, we're just awaiting the final judgment. But yet, once you have faith in Jesus Christ, you avoid that negative final judgment of eternally being separated from God and never seeing God. You know, you're given life. And it says also that when Christ appears, we will appear with him, you know, and I think it's really alluding to the resurrection of the dead that, you know, Christ who made everything, who made the universe, who made us, is going to raise us from the dead. And so it's saying that we will appear with him again, that, you know, when we close our eyes here on earth, you know, it's not that we disappear forever for all of eternity, but we will once reappear with Christ and it's because he is in God and he's from God. And so, um, and he is God. And so, um, you know, that's pretty much what I'm going to make for this podcast today. Uh, you know, hopefully it was interesting, you know, um, 
we all have to come to that decision of, you know, seeking the truth. You know, Jesus said he is the truth, you know, and it gets hard. You know, there's a lot of uh, different voices in the world, you know, uh, meaning there's different religions or ways of life that are push- pushing and pulling us, trying to go towards a certain direction. But in the Bible, God says that if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. And so we don't have to always doubt or wonder, you know, if Christianity is the right way or, you know, should I put my faith in Jesus Christ? You know, one way I look at it as, you know, this may not be, you know, how I totally look at things, but one thing I did think about is that, you know, you're not going to really find any, you know, if you're thinking of Christianity as a religion, you know, even though Christians don't necessarily think of it in as a religion, as other religions think of their religion. But if you're thinking of Christianity as a religion, you know, you're not going to find any God better than the God of the Bible, you know, and you're not going to find any God that is as righteous and has, you know, the laws that God has and the standard of righteousness that God has, you know, and you're not going to find any religion that is like the God of the Bible, you know, because, you know, all these other religions, one, are, you know, man-made or, you know, uh, also, you know, allowing things that the Bible brings out as immoral, you know, that think the Bible brings out as, you know, unrighteous. And I wouldn't necessarily base your decision on, you know, oh, I know I know this one Christian or I know these Christians and, you know, they are not, you know, what I think they should be. No, you base your decision on who you perceive Jesus to be from the scriptures and who God says he is in the word of God. And so anyway, um, you can uh, find out how to become a Christian um, on my website, or uh, I also have other website recommendations. Um, You know, if you do a Google search, you're probably going to get a whole bunch of different um, opinions about, uh, you know, there's different branches of kind of Christianity, you know, uh, that are a little bit kind of, uh, there's a lot of different kind of crazy ways, but um, I would recommend reading the book of Romans, you know, that would probably be one of the best bets for uh, really understanding the Christian faith. Um, I would also read the book of John because uh, really the gospel of John, um, because those two books are pretty much the foundation of, you know, what it means to be a Christian. Um, And, you know, any other, you know, kind of denomination or Christian group should be basing their, you know, uh, beliefs off of the Bible. And so um, if you want to learn what it takes to become a Christian, the book of Romans says that if you call on the name of the Lord, if you call on Jesus Christ, the Bible says you will be saved. The Bible also says that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. And so, um, you know, a lot of uh, pastors or teachers may lead you in a prayer that 
you know, helps you to call on the name of the Lord, you know, that you start to, one, believe in Jesus Christ, but also you acknowledge God who is not too far from all of us, you know, uh, even though God is in heaven, but his presence is not too far from all of us that, um, you know, he can hear when you call on him. And so through your believing, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so you can find those passages in uh, the book of Romans, you know, is where that comes out and also the book of John. And so um, if anyone would like to become a Christian, um, you can pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, you know, I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, I believe that God raised you from the dead. Jesus, please accept me into the family of God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And so that prayer is just a jumping off point for you to call on the name of the Lord. And um, the Bible says, when you do that, you will be saved. And there's, of course, you know, um, more dynamic to believing in Jesus Christ. Um, It has to do with your repentance and your obedience to the gospel that, that Jesus, you know, you can read about in the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So anyway, um, like I said, you can find God if you search for him with all your heart. And so um, thanks so much for checking out this podcast uh, for those that did. And I will talk to you on the next one. See ya.